sallallahu aleyhi ve sellem Efendimiz Hazretlerinin aziz pak münevver mutahar ruh şeriflerine salavat şerifi getirenlerin ahir ve akıbetleri hayır olarak. Âl-i Esvâcı'yı tahkir et evladı Resul-i Sağdîn Efendilerimizin ve sahir-i Enbiya-i Zembe Rusul-u Fîhân Hazretlerinin Enbiya-i Şeriflerine Pirimiz Bilallah Habeşir Radiyallahu'nun Efendimizin Şeyhimiz Sahibü Seyf Şeyh Abdülkerim ve Kıbrıs Erbabani Hazretlerinin ve ayar husus bu caminin bahanesi ve bugüne, bugüne kadar içerisinden gelmiş geçmiş iman benzin kaynılarını ve kahve ehli imanın ervahı için Allah rızasını ödeyen Fatiha Yavuz billahi ve şeytanın acim Bismillahirrahmanirrahim İnna Allah ve melaiketahu yusallun alem nebi ya ayyuhallazina amanu sallu alayhi wa sallimu taslima Allahumma salli ala sayyidina Muhammed wa ala ali sayyidina Muhammed Allahu ekber Allahu ekber Allahu ekber Elhamdülillah, elhamdülillah, elhamdülillahi rabbil alemin ve salatu ve selamu ala rasulina muhammedin ve ala alihi ve sahbihi ecmain. Nehmedullah ta'ala ve naqsafir ve şerven la ilahe illallah vahdehu la şerike la. Neşhedü enne seyyidina muhammeden abduhu, habibuhu ve resuluhu sallallahu aleyhi ve ala alihi ve azvacihi ve sahibi tabi hulafin raşidin bahadir min ba'di. Ve zemmeti ala tahkik, khususen minhum ala imati hulafi rasul ala tahkik. Umar el-Mu'minin, Hazreti Ebu Bakr, Umar Usman ve Ali ve ala bakir sabay tabi'in, Ridvan ve Ta'ala aleyhim ecma'in. Ya eyyuhal mu'minul hazirun, yetekullah ta'ala ve atihu inna Allahumma allazina teku allazina hum muhsinun. Elhamdülillahi rabbil alemin. Ve salatu ve selamu ala şerafil anbiya ve mursalin, Seyyidina Mevlana Muhammedin ve ala alihi ve sahbihi ecma'in. All praises are due to Allah, all praises are due to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who says in the Holy Quran, in Surah Al-Rahman, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. All that is on earth will perish, but there remains the face of your Lord of might and glory. Then which of the favors of your Lord will you deny? Whoever is in the heavens and the earth, seek from him. Every day he shines in new splendor. Then which of the favors of your Lord will you deny? Soon we will settle your affairs of both of you worlds. Then which of the favors of your Lord will you deny? O assembly of jinn and men, if you have power to pass beyond the zones of the heavens and the earth, then go, pass. You will not pass except with a sultan. Then which of the favors of the Lord will you deny? Sadaqallah al -Azim. May all peace and blessings be upon the seal of the prophethood, the imam of the messengers, the support of the helpless, the intercessor of the sinners, the rescuer of the day of judgment, Sayyidina Muhammad wasalam, and upon his noble family and blessed companions, Especially upon the four Khulafa Rashidin, Hazrat Abu Bakr Siddiq, Hazrat Umar Faruk, Hazrat Osman Al Ghani, and Hazrat Ali Al Murtaza, and all those who follow them until the last day. Ya Iha Mu'minun, O believers, ten days, 
10 days stand between us and the entrance of the three holy months. A believer, a thinking believer must be using these 10 days to ask himself, am I ready to welcome Allah's month? and the Prophet's month, and the Ummah's month. The thinking, it is a characteristic of a believer. A believer is not a man who follows blindly, but he thinks and he understands and he sees the signs of his Lord. Hazrat Umar Farooq radiallahu an said, the foundation of a man, the foundation of a man is his akal his thinking. His honor is in his deen, his religion, and his manhood is in his akhlaq, his manners. When a person stops thinking, he becomes worse than an animal. Although an animal, an animal does not think, but an animal behaves according to his nature. And the nature has been set by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. An animal does not go out of his nature. But when a man stops thinking, he comes out from his nature and he becomes worse than an animal. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave the capacity to think to mankind, to Hazrat Insan. And the believer, the believer must use that akal. When a man stops thinking, he falls into a gaflet, heedlessness. And gaflet, it takes the honor of a man away. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Surah Al-Araf, Bismillah ar-Rahman rahim There are many jinn and men we have made for hell. They have hearts that don't understand. Eyes that don't see, and ears that don't hear. They are like cattle. No, they are worse. These are the ghafilun. These are the people of heedlessness. Sadaqallah Azim. What happens when the whole ummah is in heedlessness? What happens when the whole world is in heedlessness? What happens when the ummah Muhammad Muhammad becomes heedless? Our Shaykh, Sahib al Saif, Shaykh Abdul Karim al Kibrisi who is carrying the sifat of Bashir and Nazir, the one who gives the good news and the one who warns. Sahih al-Sahif is giving the answer, saying, Muslims are heedless and they are headless. That's what became. And yes, the Ahir of Ahir Zaman, the Holy Prophet والسلام, is saying, that's what will happen to this nation in the end of times. And he is saying to us, their enemies, will all come together against them and their enemies will finish them. And the companion said, Ya Rasulullah, is it because our number is going to be very less at that time than them? He said, no, your number is going to be more than them, but you're not going to be able to do anything. Why is that? Because the nation of Muhammad is going to fall in love with his dunya. They are going to love the dunya more than Allah, more than Ahirat. And they are going to hate to hear of death. They are not going to want to hear about death. They are going to run away from death. And that is the time that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is going to remove the haybat, the honor and the majesty of Islam away from you. And the unbelievers are going to look at you and they are going to see nothing there. They are going to attack and they're going to finish you. Isn't that what's happening to this nation? Isn't that what's happening to this ummah? Say, somebody say, where are the scholars? Where are the alims of this nation? Say, yes, that's what's happening. That's what happened to this nation because the khutbah place, this khutbah place became a place for the imams to collect money. This is what happened. The hutbah is to remind the believers, to say to them what kind of situation they are in, not having any fear from anyone, having fear only from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The imam must remind the jamaat to say to them, this is what's happening to you. 
Juma time is not the time to learn religion. Juma time is to know, to learn, to understand what kind of heedlessness the nation has fallen into. This is what Juma is for. Yes, Juma is there to wake up the believers. Juma is not the time to give theory or lessons or fiqh or philosophy. Juma is the time to say, O oh believers, be careful. The direction that we are taking now is taking us to Jahannam. Turn away from the road of shaitan and the ego and turn to the road of Rahman. What is Shaykh Afandi saying? The haybat of Islam will be taken away. Can anyone say that today's Muslims, that we have haybat? Can anyone say that the enemies of the Muslims have fear from the majesty of Islam or from the majesty of the Ummah? Look at our situation. Look and think at our situation. For more than a hundred years, look and think. Look that for the past 111 years, since they took away the power of the Khalifa, look how our brothers and our sisters, our fathers and our mothers, they have been killed and they have been tortured. First by unbelievers, then by Muslims, then by tyrants, then by our own heedlessness. Look and see and understand that we are responsible. They are locked into cages and camps, tortured and killed with nobody to stand up for them. Because those who have power, they don't care. Because those who have power want to maintain their power. Because those who have power don't want to lose their power and they know that if they stand up, and they try to break the system, they will lose their power. So from top to bottom, Muslims have stopped caring. Muslims they lost the heart to care. Muslims lost the heart that the Holy Prophet described that we must be feeling pain for our fellow believers. So proud to say we are two billion Muslims. Everyone is saying that. So proud to say we have Muslim politicians, we have Muslim geniuses, we have Muslim scientists, we have Muslim sportsmen, we have Muslim artists. But where are they when it comes to defending the rights of the poor and the oppressed? So proud that we are two billion Muslims, but they turn into two billion selfish egos. We care only for our own comfort. Was it always like this? Definitely it wasn't. We are in the days of remembering the Urs of the Sultan, of our last Khalifa who ruled for 33 years in the worst of times, who stood up against the whole world, who stood up against the Munafiks inside the ranks for 33 years alone, defending the rights of every Muslim from east to west and north and south. We are remembering the Urs of a Khalifa that just his spirit is worth two billion. Muslims today are looking for heroes. They're looking at comic books, just like this dunya is saying. They are looking at Western presidents and prime ministers and kings to be their heroes, just what the dunya is pulling us and making us to believe. What happened to our real heroes? They are making to seem your real heroes are only 1400 years ago. From 1400 years up till now, no heroes came. Everything became corrupt. We have fallen into the trap that they have laid for us to make us to feel ashamed of our past without understanding, without doing any thinking. Yes, we have heroes. We have heroes whose names, they are written in the skies with golden alphabets. We have heroes that until yesterday, 
They were defending the rights of every Muslim man, woman, and child of every believer. They're defending the rights even of the unbelievers, defending the rights of Hazrati Insan. Ulu Hakan, Sultan Abdul Hamid Khan. He is such a hero. He is the most important hero in the last hundred years that we must remember. Sultan Abdul Hamid Khan became the Khalifa at the age of 34 years old. After his uncle Sultan Abziz Khan, Sultan Abdul Aziz Khan, he was assassinated by traitors. Everywhere inside and outside the empire was filled with those who are seeking to destroy the Hilafat, to destroy the Ummat, and to destroy Islam. Our Grand Sheikh Sultan al Awliya Sheikh Maulana Muhammad Nazim Adil Haqqani is speaking about the Shan of Sultan Abdul Hamid Khan. He is saying, Sultan al Awliya, Sultan Abdul Hamid, one of the last Khalifas of the Ottoman Empire, the last ruling Khalifa of the Ottoman Empire, held the whole empire by himself, one person. The khutbahs were given in his name throughout the whole Muslim world. He kept the trust, the imanat of the Prophet He also worked with his hands. Yes, he sold his work and he ate from its earnings. He found time for that amidst the work of a huge empire. He never sat upon his throne for judgment until he had made the Naqshbandi wirid recited from the Qur'an, recited from the Laylul Hayrat, prayed Ishraq, and he prayed Duha. Then he would come. He was such a person. There were blessings. There was barakat during his rule, more mercy. For 33 years, he held the whole Ottoman Empire, that is the Islamic Empire, because he was the Khalifa, keeping the flag of the Prophet ﷺ. Hey, but, yes, Sultan Abdul Hamid Khan was a man with Haybat. He was a man that when the people of the East and the West saw him, their heads bowed down in respect. And that Haybat came from an unflinching, absolute, complete devotion to Allah and His Prophet and the Evliya Allah and to Tariqat and to Tasawuf. Sultan Abdul Hamid Khan stood for Haq and he was standing opposing to battle. Sultan Abdul Hamid Khan's aim was to keep the flag of the Holy Prophet ﷺ high. Understand the whole world was against him and they plotted and tried to kill him so many times. What are we being busy with? We're not being busy with our history. We're not being busy with Sultan Abdul Hamid Khan. We're not being busy with our heroes in Islam and for Haq. What are we being busy with? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying through the Holy Prophet والسلام, Allah loves that when your intentions and your aims are big. We have become a nation that although we're two billion, our aims have become very small. Very, very small, very tiny, very useless. Because our aim has become just about our own comfort, about our family, about eating and drinking, and about this dirty dunya. Our aim is not the aim of Islam anymore. The aim is not the aim of the Prophet anymore. The aim is not the aim of the Hilafat anymore. Our aim has just to do with our own everyday comfort for us and for our family. If you stretch it a little bit bigger, just our own nation, nationalism. Not about the Ummat, you can talk a lot about the Ummat, but just your nation. But Sultan Abdul Hamid Khan, his concern was the whole nation of the Ummat. There were those who were sitting next to him and they were pretending to be his advisors but they were against him and they were plotting against him. But he had the intelligence of a believer and he was looking with the nur of Allah and he saw through their plots and he preserved and he protected the office of the Hilafat. 
And he worked, he worked to wake up the spirit of Islam again. He was sending aid and help to the Muslims in Africa, in India, in Indonesia, everywhere to wake them up and bring the body of the Muslims together. He even started to spread Islam into Japan. The Emperor Meiji sent a letter to Sultan Abdul Hamid Han saying, I'm asking you to send us scholars to teach us Islam, which can build a moral relationship between you and us. He was sending help to the Christians where their own kings and their own queens were forsaking them. The aim of Sultan Abdul Hamid Han was to continue the mission of the Holy Prophet والسلام, to spread the light of La ilaha illallah, Muhammad Rasulullah into every household. And yes, he inspired fear in the enemies of Islam with his haybat. In France, they wrote a play to insult the Holy Prophet When this was informed to Sultan Abdul Hamid Han, he told the French, if you put on this play, I will declare war on you from the seat of the Hilafat on behalf of the entire Alam al-Islam. The Prime Minister of France himself stepped in and stopped the play from being performed. Today's Muslims cannot even stop a newspaper from printing a cartoon, humiliating our Prophet. And today's Muslims are the first to stand up and to say, this is okay, this is free expression. Our faith is strong enough, we are not bothered by this. Shem Olana is telling us that the German king, Willem II, said, I have met many monarchs and rulers in my life and I found them all to be my inferiors beneath me, or at best, my equals. But when I entered the presence of Abdul Hamid, I began to tremble. He worked non-stop for Islam. Sultan Abdul Hamid Han, Jainat Mekhan, he built the Hijazi railway to connect the whole Muslim world to Mecca and Medina. He reduced the debts of the empire by more than 90%. He kept Quds Sharif in the hands of the Muslims. He was the Khalifa in maybe the hardest times that the Ummah had ever seen. He was writing poems asking for help from Allah, saying, My Allah, I know you are the Aziz. There is no Aziz but you. You are the one, nothing else. My Allah, take my hand in these hard times. My Allah, be my helper in this dangerous hour. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, that he does not change the condition of a people until they change it themselves. The condition of the Muslims, it was honorable and majestic, but the people wanted to become disgraceful and ashamed. So they ran to bring the Sultan down. Shaykh Hani is saying, when it came to Sultan Abdul Hamid Han, he checked and he said, how many people What's the percentage that is uprising? So Sultan Abdul Hamid Han looked and he checked. He checked those nations that were under his ruling and he saw that they were uprising. Against what? They said, we want to be free. Free means what? Without the laws of Allah. He saw that these are the nations. This is how much percentage there are in each nation uprising. And Sultan Abdul Hamid Han sat. He sat and he waited. He said to his people, don't do anything. The general said to him, O Sultan, we have a big power, we have a big army, we can crush them down. He said, no, all these soldiers who are with me, if one dies in this way, then I will be very sorry in the judgment day. They should not. But they may become martyrs with me. And they didn't take military action. They didn't use the army. He let them uprise. They took him. They sent him to exile. And he died as a martyr too. Sultan al awliya is talking about what Sultan Abdul Hamid Han was going through, saying, one Sultan, one Sultan who you threw out with all kinds of accusations and still you accuse him. Sultan Abdul Hamid Han, Jainat Mekan, one man alone, pay attention. On his own, for 40 years, he ruled a country of 10 million square kilometers with justice. 
on his own for 40 years. In the end, they had him dethroned by evil ones who came and said to the Sultan, the people don't want you, and they dethroned him. If he had wanted, he could have captured those people coming to him, but he knew. Bismillah rahman rahim Innahu Hamidun Majid. Sadaqallah Lazim. The Hilafat ends in the Hamidun Majid. So he didn't object. He said, Okay, if people don't want me, I leave. I leave it to the people. They captured Sultan Abdul Hamid, who was such a Sultan that he is a symbol of justice. They made him get on a train in Istanbul. The Salonika converts, the Bulgarian gypsies and some other shaitans, and they didn't leave him in Istanbul. They took him to Salonika to insult him. When he got off the train, the cursed ones there came and called him Corporal Hamid. Such a great Sultan. They called him Corporal Hamid. The Sultan took out his handkerchief and he ripped it apart and said, May Allah make you like this. May you become like this. Have they become like this? They have. Does this nation know these things? No, they don't. Today there are 80 million people. It is uncertain who rules whom. It is uncertain who leads whom. You say constitution. You have no right to make a constitution. You have no right to make any constitution. You gathered these assemblies based upon what? You dethroned the Sultan. What have you done? You have become millions of people. What have you accomplished? Which one of you could do what one man alone did? What has this state of yours done in this last 80 years? What did it give to the people? What honor did it bring? Did we get rich? Did we get religious? Did we get more powerful? Did we get more respectable? Who is respecting us? We are asking help from other people. Shame on us. Still, still, what is destined in heavens for it is this is the land of the Ottomans. This is our history. This is our history as told to us by the awliya Allah. And this is a history that is still being written. As Shem Allah is saying, the heavens are still writing. Land of the Ottomans. For those who honor the Sultan, for those who honor the Ottomans, there is good news. There is light. And even in the middle of the darkness, Shem Allah is saying, again, this nation, the grandsons of Ottomans, will appear. And they will raise the flag of Islam. Say, we are Ottomans. In this dargah, our Shaykh has taught us to say, we are Ottomans. In this dargah, our Shaykh, Sahib al Saif, Shaykh Abdul Karim, our Shaykh has taught us to live, to say, we are the servants of the Sultan. In this dargah, our Shaykh, Sahib al Saif, has taught us the honor of Sultan Abdul Hamid Han, Ulu Hakan. We are saying and we are living according to the words, Biz Osman Liz, Pekshan Liz. And our Shaykh, more than 13 years ago, he is saying to this Jamaat, the sleeping legend. Wake up your sleeping legend. Or they will wake you up and send you to the other side. Be careful. Everyone should wake up. This is not a circus. This is reality. Anyone who is with me should prepare themselves for that. In the words of the friends of Allah speak the truth. The history of this world has not finished. And the one writing that history is Allah Jalla Live so that your name will be written with the name of your Shaykh. Otherwise, we will burn in the fire of regret. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless the spirit of Sultan Abdul Hamid Han. May Allah send us a Sultan who cares for the Ummah. May Allah make us servants of the Sultan. May Allah give us a heart that feels for the Ummah and the ability to run to help the Ummah. May we be counted as the servants of the Holy Prophet wasalam. May we be counted as the servants of our Shaykh. May we leave this world counted as Usman. Inshallah. Amen. Astaghfirullah. Astaghfirullah.